The basic tools we're talking about is, is this is the mosaic hammer and this is the hardy. Um, it's actually, uh, I think it's developed from a blacksmith's tool because you get a hardy hole on, a, on an anvil. Um, and that, that's how you buy it. So the, fir the first thing we're going to look at is about, um, you know, buying these tools. Um, the hammers, you can, you can get different weights. This is the kind of standard weight hammer. Uh, there's also a lighter one, which you, you, some people might find quite good. And I think it's quite good for cutting small tea because uh, you don't really need so much weight for cutting small tea. Although if you're cutting marble, the, the heavier hammer tends to be better. Um, the, the hammers have a tungsten carbide or whittier tip to them. So that that's, that's, it makes them very strong and sharp. But they do have to be sharpened. You can't just buy a hammer and keep it going forever. Um, we'll talk a little bit about sharpening in a minute. So, so it's got a sharpened tungsten carbide tip. Um, normally when you buy the hammer, the head and the handle come separately. Um, and the head just simply slides down onto the, um, slides down through, through the handle and then you sort of give it a good bang to make sure it's well stuck on and not wobbling or anything like that. The first thing you'll probably find that you'll have to do is actually cut the handle. Um, the handle of your hammer should be about the length that will fit between your wrist and the inside of your elbow there. Okay, or another way of measuring it is, is this distance on your hand is quite a good, um, but, but people use both methods, but that, that's, that's the one Julia prefers. Menosi prefers that one, so which he oh, it seems to end up with a slightly shorter ha handle to me, but anyway. So that, that's the, um, the hammer, the hardy, which is this thing, needs to be um, fixed into a, a log or a piece of wood. You can use a, a, a tree stump or you can use a, um, an old railway sleeper or anything like that. And usually it needs to be set at a comfortable height for you to work at. Now what a comfortable height is obviously depends on how, I mean, I always work standing up, so I need a, a higher one than if you, if you prefer to work sitting down. But, but basically, you need to be in a position where you can hold your hammer and with your arm at roughly a right angle and it be kind of hovering just above the hardy. And that should be, you know, your elbow should be in by your body and your arm should be at a right angle. So, you know, obviously the height's going to adjust according to that. Um, this is like the, the, the mobile version. And in and, and actual fact, there are quite a few mosaics from the Roman period that actually show Hammer and Hardy's being used exactly like this, with a small stump. Uh, I think because of the Roman mosaic makers working direct on site would literally sit actually like this with the hardy in front of them. You can also kind of rest your arm a bit more on your, on your, on your leg and work like that. So it's quite, um, you know, it's got a, you can have the short, short ones as well, but as long as it's firm. Now, when, when you're fixing the hardy into the log, um, you can see it's got a kind of wedge shape on, on, on that profile. You need to drill your hole so you've got a good inch, a couple of centimetres deeper hole than, than, your hardy, than your hardy. And the reason for that is um, as, as you're banging down on the, on the hardy, if it's pushing right at the bottom, two things happen. One is that um, 
you'll split the log because it'll be it'll push down into log and split it. The other thing is you're causing more um, reverberation up through your arm. So it's also acting as a bit of a cushion for the, for the impact. Yeah? So the hole, you need to drill a hole that's a good inch deeper and then your hardy is dropped into the hole. Then you need to get a block of wood that you lay on top of the hardy and just sort of bang it down into the, into the log like that. Um, and you'll find that, um, I'm not sure if people, people set hardies at different heights or whether it's just because some hardies have been so well used that, that gradually the hardy actually sinks down. Sometimes it will get loose, in which case you need to put um, the, a board on it again and give it another hammer. But I've seen hardies where there's only like, hammer and hardies where there's only that much tip. Um, poking out of the top. But this, this is the kind of tradition where it kind of looks, looks more crafty, doesn't it, if you have it in a log. And I've, uh, I've um, seen a few adjustments where people have put, built like trays around to catch the debris or so they can um, push the debris away from your little cutting area but still keep it in a tray. I think there's... Um, I forget his name, that guy in Ravenna who just does the crowd scenes. He had one of these trays on his log. Anyway, in actual fact, the hardy shouldn't be sharp um, because what, what happens is when you're, when you're cutting with the hammer, um, if both the hammer and the hardy are sharp, the, 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 the break will come from both ends at once and you'll get a kind of badly sort of cleaved edge. Whereas if the hardy is blunt and the hammer is sharp, the, the break will come from the top and then travel through the stone to the back. So in fact, you might even find it's good to actually dull the hardy if you've got a brand new one. You, know, you can get a file and actually take the, take the point off of it because it's too much. Um, holding the hammer, for the sort of standard cut, you, you need to hold the hammer, you know, an inch or so away from the head, and in that kind of, so that the handle of the hammer is in line with your arm, like an extension of your, this bone, whatever it's called. And you, you should remember not, you don't grip the hammer. You should be able to hold the hammer loose enough that it will kind of slide in and out. If you're really holding the hammer tight, you're just going to sort of wear your arm out really fast. So, um, we start off with our marble. If you, you can buy um, tesserae in... Uh, or, you know, small tesserae, but usually the, the most economic way of using marble is to, buy, is to either buy slabs and cut it into strips with a wet saw, or, or buy, you can buy rods and strips ready cut down like this. Um, so, this is still a little bit higher for me, but I'll get... I'll, <coughs> Try it like that. So your arm should be at right angles with the hammer, and the hammer should be coming down uh, parallel with the hardy and straight. You shouldn't be coming at it with an angle like that. You should come down straight. And you're really you're, you're not you're not um, using any power in that. You're just using the weight of the hammer to come down onto the. Um, onto the thing. If, so, we should be able to just... Um, oop, chop some bits up. Once you, you're off of the, um, the... what do you call it? The rod. Sorry. 
I feel like I'm doing this perched on a tree or some tree top. It's very weird. I actually made a mistake there because I don't know if you. The, the way to tell if you're cutting right is the noise it makes. If it makes a click, you, you've done it right. If it makes a clock, <laughs> you've done it wrong. If it makes a clock and a noise like that, you've done it really wrong. Because <laughs> the, the idea is that the, the, hammer, the hammer should hit, hit the material. Sorry. See, I've done it again. Um, without hitting the hardy. So your, your effort is in um, not letting the hammer hit the hardy. Okay? You might find that with some harder materials, um, where you have to, like green marble and stuff like that, where you have to put a bit more effort into the hitting, that you can actually hit slightly back from the hardy so that the hammer travels past, sort of glances off the hardy like that rather than um, so there's a bit more force involved. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we'll leave that bit for a minute and go on to the uh, even scarier bit. So small T. And the first thing we need to do is to cut it with a glass cutter. Can I do this precariously on here? <laughs> Try. This could go horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah. So the, the idea is that you really need to make sure that the, the score travels the full length of the pizza. Don't let it, don't let it, um, yeah, it's got to go from end to end. You can't, you can't start a bit back from the edge. And when you're coming to break it, put that somewhere, <coughs> you're going to work, working, whoop, crash, okay. You're holding it so the, the score line is in line with your hardy, so, you, so you're working the other way. It's a good idea to just tap it. If you're good at it, you can actually hear a change in the noise that the tapping makes, but I'm not. So, hang on a sec, I haven't finished yet. Where did my um, cutter go? The good thing is that the cutting actually gets easier. as we go along. So that's half, quarter, and then you do the, um, the quarter in half again. This is just like for standard cutting, yeah? If you're really smart, if you I don't know how many people know about Julian Minosi, but he, he cuts with his hammer, which is, um, is very impressive. And also shows that he keeps his hammer really nice and sharp. Come on. Two minutes. Two minutes, ooh. Nearly there.
bit off. Anyway, once you're down to that kind of size, and go back to cutting with a hammer. Whoop. <laughs> and then you usually you work half, half, half. until you can get down to sort of that kind of size and then um, you can either, if you're looking for tesserae, another thing you can do, it, well, well we could, if, you want, if you want to shear off the face of your small tea, once you've cut it down to a workable size, if you drop, drop the hammer down so it's resting on your wrist a bit more, and you rest the small T on the log, you can um, very carefully with the point, turn it over, kind of shear the front off, just to, if, if you're going to, because obviously, Normally when you're using small tea, you're using this, this is the face that is showing in your mosaic. Because that, that's got the sort of nice riven, reflective side to it. It also got, usually has a slightly richer colour. Um, although of course, you know, some, some pizzas will have a different colour on the outside and you can, you can take advantage of that, some small tea. But um, if you're using it flat, then you've got this, this side that where it lands on the metal, the hot glass lands on the metal is very, very flat and shiny. And this side tends to have a bit of undulation on it. And if you don't want that, or you want a more textured surface, you can, you can shear the front off just to give it a bit of um, Big round thing. of applause. <laughs>